Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touching them said, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus received glory and praise from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him out of the majestic splendor, this is my beloved Son, on whom my favor rests. We ourselves heard this said from heaven while we were still in his company on the holy mountain. So says St. Peter in our second reading. What gave the apostles the strength to endure the trials they did? If you look at the lives of any of the apostles, they all had big crosses to carry. All of the apostles except one suffered a martyr's death. St. John was the only one not martyred. He died in exile. All of them endured beatings, imprisonment, torture, and hatred of every kind. Their crosses in most cases were far heavier than any crosses we'll ever have to carry here in modern day America. So what gave them the strength they needed to do it? The apostles had what anybody needs to endure a trial, and that is sacramental grace. The apostles received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. They had the Eucharist. St. James makes reference in his letter to confession. They all make references to baptism. They had sacramental grace, and that grace gave them strength. Well, if this is true, if all we need is sacramental grace, then why do we have so many Catholics that partake of the sacraments every week, sometimes every day, and yet fall under the slightest temptation or discouragement? Why is it we have so many people that have been Catholic all of their lives, born and raised Catholic, live with the sacraments from the beginning of their lives, and yet stop going to church once they're in college? Or once it's a choice between God and the girlfriend or the boyfriend, or God in my job or God and my friends? Once they're confronted with that choice, God is out the window. Why? Is it because the grace of God isn't present in the sacraments? Or only present to some and not to others? Or only present sometimes and not at others? No. The grace of God is always, always present in the sacraments. The question is, are we looking for grace in the sacraments? Are we using the grace found in the sacraments to see Christ in our lives? I don't think many people do. Grace means God's life within us. I don't think many people actively seek that life of grace, so the grace is not effective. They see the church as a purely human institution. They see the sacraments as purely human ceremonies. And many times I hear people say things like, well, if I saw the miracles that Jesus did, if I had heard him preach, if I saw him rise from the dead, if I saw him heal people, then I'd believe. And I respond to them, I hate to break it to you, but no, you wouldn't. Because many people in Jesus' day did see and hear and experience those things, and they still didn't believe. They didn't believe because they couldn't see the divinity of Christ shining through his humanity. And that's why the Pharisees couldn't believe. Like the crowd who was ready to crown Jesus king when he multiplies the loaves of bread and fish for them. But as soon as Jesus starts talking about the Eucharist, the bread of life, they all abandon him and walk home. 
Those who end up persevering in faith are those who can see Jesus' divinity behind his humanity. It was true 2,000 years ago with the people who surrounded Jesus, and it's true today with people who surround the church. And so this is what we see in this feast we celebrate today, the Transfiguration. In this feast, Jesus shows his apostles, Peter, James, and John, a glimpse of the divinity that's hidden under his humanity. Jesus did this to strengthen their faith to endure his crucifixion, which was quickly approaching. Now, why did Jesus choose to do it this way? Because there was no sacramental grace yet. The sacraments didn't exist until the crucifixion and resurrection were complete. But this transfiguration has the same effect on them that the sacraments are supposed to have on us. Just as the transfiguration gives the apostles a glimpse of the glory of God, a taste of heaven, that's what the sacraments should be doing for each one of us. Now, I'm sure many of you know that eight of our teenagers from the parish went on the Steuben Valise Youth Conference a few weeks ago. In all my years as a parish priest, because the Steuben Valise Conference started the same time I was ordained, 20 years ago, it has never failed to be a powerful experience. Some of these kids get the most powerful experience of their lives on that conference. And for many, that experience takes place on Saturday night. On Saturday night, they start off with the talk, something, the kids, something for the kids to reflect on. And the band plays some lively music, and the kids are jumping and clapping and dancing and all that stuff, and singing. And then the music gets slower and softer, more contemplative, and the kids quiet down. Then they get another short reflection, and then the Blessed Sacrament is brought out in a monstrance and processed all throughout the kids, up and down every aisle. And you should see what happens. So many kids are overcome with emotion. Some laugh, some cry, some tremble. It is a powerful emotional experience. Why? Why such a powerful reaction? It's the same Eucharist. It's the same Jesus. Why do people react so strongly to it at that conference and not here at Mass. Because at the conference, the kids have been prepared to experience the Lord. The whole weekend, starting on Friday when they arrive until Saturday night, these kids have been prepared to meet the Lord in that one climactic moment. They were prepared through the music, through the conferences, the small group discussions. And so when the monstrance is finally brought around on Saturday night, they don't see a wafer in a bronze box. They see God. They saw divine grace shining through an earthly substance. Who wouldn't laugh? Who wouldn't cry? Who wouldn't tremble? Isn't it ironic that the three kinds of reactions these kids experience are the exact same reactions that people have had all throughout Scripture when they're confronted with the glory of the living God. Read through the Bible, and you will find that when people are faced with the glory of God, they respond either with joy, with contrition, or like the apostles today, they respond with awe. This is what it means to experience the transfiguration. This is what we are invited to experience each time we partake of the sacraments. Why don't we? If everything I'm saying is true, why don't we experience this transfiguration whenever we receive communion? Because, I think, many people approach the altar unprepared. These kids had a powerful experience because they were prepared for it. Jesus prepared for the apostles for three years before he took them up on that mountain to see his transfiguration. And note, he didn't take all of them. He only took three of them. Peter, James, and John. Because they were ready for it. Are we coming to confession regularly? Do we pray before Mass begins? Do we come to Mass at least every week? Or do we skip Mass some weeks? Do we observe the fast and not eat an hour before receiving communion? Do we sing the songs and listen to the readings? 
Do we prepare ourselves in the communion line and after we've received, spend time in quiet prayer in the pew, inviting the Lord into our hearts and asking for the grace to live a good life? Do we make a good Thanksgiving after Mass or do we rush out the door? And then five minutes later start cussing at the people in the parking lot who aren't moving their cars fast enough for us. Oh, I have observed. All of these things prepare us to see with our hearts what our eyes cannot see. So we can have a glimpse of the living God as he was transfigured in glory. So he can also transfigure our lives. And blessed be God forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.